Hello everyone. Now that we've gone ahead and taken a look at the different graphical transformations that can be applied to a parent function in isolation, what we want to be able to do now is take a look at multiple or various transformations applied to a parent function together. So, miscellaneous transformations. Given any child function, can you apply the various transformations to the parent to be able to graph the child? So remember we said that the family of functions is going to look like this. y is equal to a times by the parent function, which is, in this case, f of x, bx minus c plus d. So notice again, we have one, two, three, four different transformations. And what if we take those transformations in combination to a parent, particular parent functions? Will we be able to go ahead and graph the child function accurately? Well, before we actually go ahead and take a look at that question, let's go ahead and first ask this question here because these two questions are going to be very important for us to consider in order for us to properly graph the child function. Does the order of the transformations matter? Okay, remember, we're taking more than one transformation and applying it to a parent function. Now that we have more than one, does the order matter? And the answer for that is yes. So say, for example, we take a look at this very simple one. It says y is equal to the opposite of the absolute value of x plus 1. We can all recognize that the parent function is going to be the absolute value function. And we have two transformations. The first transformation, or I should say one of the transformations, is a reflection about the x-axis. And the other transformation is a vertical shift of 1. Now, starting with the parent function of f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. If I was to go ahead and take the reflection first and then shift up 1, this is what the graph would look like. If, on the other hand, I went up 1 and then did the reflection, the graph would look like this. So what we can see just by this very, very simple example is that if we have more than one transformation applied to a parent function, we're going to have to be very careful about the order in which we actually apply the transformation. Now, what is the proper order then, being that we know that, the, that the, uh, the order of the transformations does make a difference? Well, when we go ahead and take a look at, again, this expression for the family of functions, we really need to go ahead and kind of consider what actually happens first and then next, based upon how the function is actually uh, stated itself. So say, for example, if I gave you a particular value of x, and then I wanted you to go ahead and find the y value of that particular, uh, for that particular value of x, what would you come up with? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the order of operations that we would actually apply to that particular value of x. The first thing that we would do is we'd have to actually go ahead and multiply x by b and then subtract c. And then after that, we put that into the parent function, and then we come up with a particular y value, which is then multiplied by a and then added to d to give you the y value of the child function. So if we consider that, what has to happen first is we have to take a look at all of the transformations which affect x first, because those were the things that we did first when we actually substituted the value of x into the child function. We multiplied it by b and then we subtracted c. And then after that, we put it into the parent function. So we need to go ahead and make sure that we account for all the horizontal reflections, stretches and shrinks as well as the horizontal translations first. Okay, and then after that, notice what happens is that we, are, we take a look at how that particular parent function value is then going to be multiplied by A, which is going to be the vertical reflection, stretch, or shrink. And then after that, the last thing that we did was we vertically translated with this particular value D. Okay, so again, we need to attend to all of the transformations with effect X first with the reflection stretch shrink coming before the horizontal translation and then after that attend to the vertical transformations by looking at the vertical reflection stretch and shrinks and lastly do the vertical translations. Okay, so let's take a look at an example where we have all four of those particular transformations being applied to a particular parent function. So let's say for example that we have y is equal to the opposite of the absolute value of 2x minus 1 plus 3. Now, this can get pretty tricky, but there's a very, very, very simple way of being able to go ahead and determine how
how these particular parameters B and C are affecting the parent function to help us actually graph the child function. And this is what we do. Here is, uh, we know that our parent function is going to be the absolute value of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here, and in this green line right here, I'm going to go ahead and be very selective of a particular part of the domain of the parent function. So in this case, being that we're dealing with the absolute value function, we know that the absolute value function goes like this. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a part of that, and I'm going to say if I go from negative 1 to 1 on the domain of the parent function, then it represents this green V part right here. Once I know what that part is, then I know the rest of the parent function and what the parent function looks like. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take that particular domain and I'm going to apply the transformations, which is 2x minus 1, to that particular domain. So what that means then is that if I go from negative 1 to 1 and the parent function was just x, I need to go ahead and apply these transformations to that particular domain and what I need to do then is just add 1 to all three parts of this inequality and then I divide by 2. And so what happens here is this now becomes the shrunk, stretched, reflected, and translated domain of the child function. So instead of having a parent function which goes from negative 1 to 1, I now have a transformed domain which is from 0 to 1. So what that means then is that this green parent function portion of the graph has now been shrunk and shifted in such a way that it represents the new domain for the child function. Okay, so with that very simple technique of taking care of these two parts right here. And the nice thing about it is that we don't have to worry about the order in which things happen because we can just go ahead and do the algebra. The algebra takes care of it the order itself. Then what needs to happen is that we need to go ahead and take a look at the vertical reflection, stretch and shrink, which means then that I would reflect this down this way, and then after that the vertical translation of plus 3 moves it up here. So now once we get this part here, I know that the vertex is going to be right over here at 1 half comma 3, and that these points right over here, after being reflected and shifted up, are going to be at 0, 2, and 1, 2. And once I get that V-shape, of course, I know that the, that the parent function or the new child function is going to still remain that V-shape, and I can just go ahead and extend those lines. Now, here's, here's the thing. How do we go ahead and be sure that we actually got the correct child function? Well, the easiest way to do that is given these particular coordinates that we said are going to be a part of the child function's graph, is we need to go ahead and take these values, substitute it into our child function, and see if it works. If it works, then you know you got the correct graph. If it doesn't work, then of course that means that you got something wrong someplace. So, to wrap everything up again, if we want to go ahead and take a look at miscellaneous transformations being applied to a parent function, we need to be very careful of the order of the transformations. And the proper order of the transformations will be, will be determined by the way that we actually go ahead and substitute a value of x in to come out with a particular value of y from your parent for your child function. So that means that we need to attend to all the transformations which affect the x first. And we can do that very simply by being selective with the domain of your parent function and then applying the inequality this way to be able to come up with the new transform domain of your child function. And then after that, attend to all of the vertical transformations, which is the reflections, stretches and shrinks vertically, as well as the shifts, which is, of course, going to be last. And then lastly, take some of those values, substitute it back into your child function, see if it works. If it does, you got the graph of the child function. Okay, so we will go ahead and take a look a little bit more in depth at some of these, uh, some of these problems just to make sure that we can be sure that we can graph a child function appropriately. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye.